get rolling. So welcome, welcome uh, to back to our webinar series. I'm super excited to be doing these again now that we're in 2021. Um, so we've got a whole new list of webinar topics that we're going to be doing this year, um, covering things like this from storytelling, where we're hearing from our uh, social and storytelling experts at Miles, to some topics that uh, different LOT staff are presenting on, like Sharon Calco, who I'm sure you know is going to be doing grant writing. Um, Will is returning with some additional sports themed ones. Um, we have Matt coming in with some partners from Group Travel Leader to cover group mm -hmm. travel. Um, so we've got a really, uh, in my opinion, really great uh, setup of the webinars over the next couple of months. We're shifting these to be uh, Tuesdays at 11 rather than Tuesday and Thursday, um, just to make sure that we're not taking up too much of everybody's time and that we're making kind of the most out of what our topics are for, um, for the lineup. So. Um, definitely encourage everybody to go look at the full list and check out what we have coming up and get registered and get it on your calendar so you don't forget because I know that's the, the first thing I do if I don't put a webinar on my calendar is I forget. <laughs> and um, also a reminder to check out the Google Recovery Toolkit that we have through the industry portal. Um, but we're keeping that. It is free through September is how long we have that right now. So if you haven't had an opportunity to look at the Google Recovery Toolkit and look at some tips on Google My Business and utilizing Yelp and TripAdvisor, definitely go check that out as well. That is free, just like these webinars and available to everybody. It's not just for CBB. So if you have an attractions partner or a hotels partner that really needs to check out some of those, those tips, especially for things like Google My Business, um, feel free to send them, the, shoot them over the links, the details that this is welcome for them as well. And as usual, we are recording today. Um, all of these webinars are up in their recorded uh, state for people who can't make it or came in late or want to revisit anything that they thought was really cool. So um, we are doing that and we'll have this up shortly after today. Um, if you have any questions, we're not a big group today, obviously. So if you want to pop off a mute and ask them, you can feel free or you can toss them in the chat and we'll address them there. And with that, I'm going to pass it to our uh, little king cake baby, Maggie, who is going to be presenting today, <laughs> and let her get started. Hey, y'all. Um, like Charissa said, I am sorry I couldn't make our fishing chat, but I'm excited um, to get working on that project. But today, let's talk storytelling on social media. So um, I want to talk just a little bit about choosing the right platform for your story, what kind of stories you're telling, and how to engage within stories. So the first thing that we always think of whenever we hear social media stories is Instagram, just because it's kind of been around for the longest, um, and it's got a lot of viewership. Um, so there's all kind of types of story posts. But then there's these story features that you can use within your story. And so um, these three red features that you see here, the location, um, the at mention, and the hashtag, those three features are more of um, making your content discoverable because people can search by location. Um, when you mention different partners, they automatically see that and then they can reshare it to their story. Um, and the same thing with hashtags, just like hashtags are discoverable on your regular um, Instagram content, they are discoverable within your story content as well. The blue ones um, where you can add a GIF or a poll, countdown, question, so on and so forth, those are more of an engagement um, feature within stories. So it gets people to kind of click through, um, maybe ask you a question, um, take a quiz, that sort of thing. So I want to talk a little bit about Instagram stories and just the different features um, within them and go through it just a little bit. So if you've noticed on the Louisiana Travel Channel um, on Instagram, the past few days, we've been featuring different house floats for Mardi Gras season. Um, so what I actually did here is I created um, just a text 
screen where you can see where it just says Mardi Gras house floats. And it kind of gives people that information going into the story to where they know what it is they're getting into. Um, and then on the second slide, you can see where we've used user generated content, where we've shared um, one of our Bayou crew members images to our story because it's got this beautiful house float with a tribute to Leah Chase. Um, on the next one, it's got Pete Fountain, and we went ahead and geotagged this one. And then you can see here, even within the story, you can click that view map, and it can show you not exactly where it is because you don't want to tell, um, you know, the world where <laughs> these people live because it is their personal home. Um, but it does kind of give like a generic geotag. So you can see um, a lot of different like restaurants, attractions, things like that. They'll have their own geotag within um, the Instagram, Facebook um, interface. Uh, on this next one, you can't really see it or necessarily hear it, but we integrated the Jaws theme song <laughs> because this beautiful Shark Week house um, is super fun and just very cool. And then on the last one, you'll see that um, we tagged a partner. So this beautiful macaw, which when I tell you that the picture just doesn't do it justice, this thing is at least 10 feet tall, um, top to bottom. So it is actually one of the animals that is featured at Audubon Park. And then the house that it is attached to overlooks Audubon Park and is across the street from the zoo. So we tagged a partner. Um, so those are just a few different things that you can do within stories. Maggie, the, Wanda just asked a question. Um, yeah. She asked, how did you insert the Jaws theme song? So where in the interface do you find that? Um, yeah. that capability. Yeah. So um, actually, I don't have a slide of that, but everyone can pick up. We're a small group. Yeah. Everyone can pick up their phone, their Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll actually walk you through it. Um, so if you've got Instagram open on your phone, like it, well, yep. Yeah, like I do here, sort of. <laughs> Sorry, that's the that ghost guy. phone. <laughs> Kill, <laughs> killing my jam. Um, if you hit that plus sign up at the top right, it's going to ask you if you want to do a new post, story, reels, or live. And so you'll hit story. Um, and you can just put kind of whatever picture on the background there. And then up at the top, there is a down arrow, which will allow you to download whatever that image is. Um, say if you've taken it in like real time. Um, there's a little smiley face that allows you to put filters on it. If you've got over 10,000 followers, the next thing that you'll see is um, it kind of looks like a little chain link to where you've got that swipe up feature within Instagram stories um, where you could link to your website or a partner or something like that. Um, and then the fourth one is this little square with a smiley face and kind of like the corner of it's coming up. And so you'll hit that and that brings up all the different features for you to add to your Instagram story. So you'll see first it'll be location, at mention, hashtag, um, ever since COVID began at the beginning of last year, you can now do a straight donation um, on your story. Um, but then on that second row, you'll see music and there's all sorts of options. You pretty much just type it in. Um, it doesn't have to be something that you necessarily have rights to. It's, there's like a blanket disclaimer that you don't have rights to use this music because you're only using it on your Instagram story, which disappears in 24 hours anyway. Um, and so what I did is I just hit the music button and I typed in the search bar Jaws theme song. Um, but you can type in all sorts of different things. Um, a couple weeks ago on one of our Instagram stories, I was at King Cake Hub where they have all sorts of different king cakes. And I just put like a Mardi Gras mambo in the search bar and it brought up 
all sorts of different options for Mardi Gras style music that you would typically hear on a parade route. Um, so does that answer your question? Did you find it easily? Can't see the chat box. <laughs> I'm looking. Yes, thanks is uh, Wanda's Perfect. response. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of little nuggets on that screen, um, Wanda. You you don't, if you don't click on it, it's like, oh, wow, there's a lot you can do here. So, uh, and then obviously a lot of stickers beneath that. So, yes, yes. Um, and so you can also see where you can add like the poll and the questions and we'll get into that just a little bit later. So moving on, what I decided to do for the season of Mardi Gras, since the house floats and Yardi Gras have become pretty popular across the entire state, it's really not just here um, in New Orleans, is I decided to save it as a highlight. So they're pretty, the stories themselves are performing really well. So I want to keep that content for longer than 24 hours to get even more views. Um, and so what you can do is you can hit highlight. <laughs> um, so right here on your homepage on Instagram, all you have to do is click this little plus button for new. Um, it'll let you select the cover image. And so I obviously um, selected the Mardi Gras house look so people see exactly what they're getting into. You can name it. Um, and then as you add things to your story, you can hit um, the highlight button. It'll be in the bottom right corner and it's got a little heart on it. Um, and you can even do it after the story disappears. You can go into your archive, um, which is here in this hamburger menu. Um, and it'll bring up all of your stories that you've previously posted. And you can go ahead and add those to your highlight even like a year later if you really want to. Um, so it's a really good way to keep that featured content or if you've got like a partner takeover, um, specifically like if y'all brought, you know, a professional fisherman in who was doing like an Instagram takeover for you guys while he was out bass fishing, um, you could have that as a highlight and keep that content that they did beyond just that day um, and beyond just the news feed within your yeah. Instagram channel. Yeah, so on Toledo Bend, y'all do a nice job with your with your highlights and showing the different um, species and the different uh, some of your top pillars. Um, so, yeah, just some fun ways to to jazz those up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then sharing your story. So it's really handy that Instagram and Facebook are owned by the same people now. Um, so you can automatically take that Instagram story and share it over to be your Facebook story. Um, all you have to do is make sure that that setting is on and it'll give you the option. Um, if you are sharing something with like a swipe up link that maybe doesn't work um, as well for the user on Facebook, you can always... Um, click that share button whenever you're sharing it over from your Instagram story to your Facebook. Um, and you can just unclick the Facebook button um, and it gives you the option of, you know, never share to Facebook or don't share to Facebook one time. So you kind of have that flexibility to either share it always or you can pick and choose what you want to share over to Facebook from Instagram. Um, so they make it super easy. So all you have to do is kind of make sure all these on. Um, another important thing for your archive, um, for your stories, if you do have older stories that you want to go back and highlight, make sure that you have this little um, button toggled to save to archive. Um, and also, it's always a good idea to save your live um, Instagrams as well, just for posterity in case you want to repurpose that content another time. Um, and allow resharing of your stories, especially if you're tagging partners. Um, so if you're tagging a partner, they are able to reshare your story onto theirs. Um, and then, uh, of course, allowing messages is always a good idea. Have y'all tried Twitter moments yet? Or fleets? 
Anybody? No, us either. Um, no, we have done a few fleets um, and you can see how, how they display. It's pretty much the same as Instagram and Facebook stories. Um, they show up in these little bubbles at the top of your feed. Um, and what, what I personally have done is taken some of our Instagram stories and repurpose them as um, Twitter stories. And the same thing with CrowdRef. You can repurpose your Instagram stories as CrowdRef stories or vice versa. It works um, the same way and you can also do it within Twitter. They work just the same way as Instagram stories. They disappear in 24 hours um, and you can do still photos, videos, um, or just that text where it says share a fleeting thought. So if it's something that you, if it's like an alert or um, if you wanted to like real quickly tell people like, hey, the fish are biting in this specific area today. Um, if you've gotten that report back from anybody, um, it's a good place to do content like that. Um, just because it's that, it's that fleeting moment, which is very appropriately named a Twitter moment or fleet. So Maggie, not to hijack, but um, you mentioned that uh, because I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity to play with fleets yet, but I can just download my Instagram story and upload it there. Do you have to play with the functionality and retag anything or does it, can you copy it directly over? You are going to have to play with the functionality a little bit and retag people if you have them tagged. Okay. Um, but building a Twitter moment or a fleet is exactly the same way as an Instagram story. Okay, great. Um, whenever you click this little plus button, it brings up this screen here um, and where you can pick and choose if you wanted to go live or a photo or a video um, or the text. So it's pretty much the same interface, but you can't directly upload with all the same tags and everything. You will have to retag it. Got it. Crowd riff amp stories. Y'all have already been doing a great job with your crowd riff stories. Um, so we will go through this just a little bit um, and talk about different ways that we can maybe um, inspire some new story types um, and things like that for y'all moving forward. Um, so an amp story. Um, accelerated mobile pages. They're a great way um, to get your content served in a number of places at one time. As y'all know, um, your stories are served on the Louisiana Travel homepage um, and other galleries within the site when it's the appropriate content. Um, and then we're also working on getting a CrowdRiff story gallery on the campaign landing page as well. So that'll be huge for views. Um, because it's got so much media run into it. Um, uh, Maggie, I'm going to jump in for just a second and kind of get a little geeky on the AMP stories. I, yeah. I'm not sure, just to just to clarify with Wanda and Marjorie and anyone who watches this later, but, but AMP is uh, basically a Google product. So that's what um, AMP stories are um, discoverable within search on Google. Um, what we found is that we're not quite at a volume to have the authority yet for our, our stories to be discoverable, but that's, we're expecting that at any point. I know that Elaine from CrowdRiff has been working closely with your team um, about um, just different campaign initiatives, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're expecting that to roll out soon, but that's the big difference between the social media stories and crowd ref stories. And that's where the, the, the huge value comes for uh, Louisiana Office of Tourism and also for all of our industry partners who are participating. So I just wanted to make that clarification. I didn't know if y'all had any questions about this or um, how the experience is going, but y'all are doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, one other thing that just for, if anybody's watching this later, for you to be able to know that right now, the um, partner network is open to all of our convention and visitor bureaus. 
Um, and then we will be rolling it out in additional stages to um, other partners within the state of attractions and influencers as well. Yeah, and to that end, um, we will likely be reaching out to our CVB partners to find out who your, um, some of your great content creators are who maybe we don't have among our Bayou Crew community yet. Um, you may have um, people in your community because I know y'all work with user-generated content a lot too. So we might be looking for recommendations from y'all around who in your area would be great content creators to bring in. Yeah. Um, so while well, y'all have been doing a great job, I wanted to show um, this one particular story from um, Lafayette. We're actually going to go ahead and link out to it. Can y'all still me still see my screen? Mm, no, we can still see the uh, the deck screen. So uh, your link out, yeah, you'll have to change the screen you're sharing. Okay. There it is. There we go. <laughs> okay. So one thing that I just wanted to show is, and I know that you guys are familiar with this as well, but that swipe up feature and that Google integration within the CrowdRef stories is such a great way to boost all of your partners in your area. Um, so Lafayette Travel has put together this story featuring 10 different bakeries around the Lafayette area that are offering king cakes to be shipped. Um, and so when you swipe up on each one of these images and slides that they have, it takes you directly to um, that bakery's Google listing and you can buy it straight from the story, see all the hours. Um, they've got a couple different locations and even more details. And it takes them right back to the Lafayette Travel website. So it's a great way to help your partners, help yourself boost those web views um, and just all around whenever you're going through um, the CrowdRef stories, it's so vital to fill out every single one of those little boxes where they give you that opportunity to give more information um, because people really do click on it. Yeah, and also worth calling out on these is uh, you'll note that the, this, these photos they're using are user generated content and you'll see how on the right rail they've given attribution to each of the people who um, that's just a field within CrowdRef stories, but that's what the attribution looks like. You can actually control where it's seen, but um, yeah, the nice, really nice, well-rounded story using a lot of the functionality and all of that link, the link attribution when you're linking out um, really helps with your Google authority as well. So uh, the buy link, the links back to the website, um, any, any type of uh, links or rich content you can add in the about section is um, it's going to help um, with that Google authority. Yeah. Um, and as y'all already know, we do have the partner network. And this is kind of just a little bit of what it looks like um, on our end, where we get to see um, all the different stories that you guys are creating and whether you've published, if they're in drafts. Um, and then it's a really good way for us to see the type of content that you're creating and maybe curate some galleries around that to drop on different pages within louisianatravel.com. So last thing that I wanted to touch on today is engaging with your followers. Um, so here I've got four different examples of different ways that you can engage. Um, this first one here over on the far left <laughs> was a quick poll that I did on our Instagram story just a couple weeks ago um, that seems to be a pretty hot topic of whether people leave the knife or don't leave the knife. <laughs> in the king cake box whenever they get a slice. Um, this particular story um, with the poll got over 9,000 views and 8,200 8, people actually clicked to vote. Um, so it was pretty, pretty crazy. Um, you always, you're right, Wanda, leave the knife. I'm telling you. You're <laughs> obviously coming back for more far too soon to <laughs> wash a knife. 
<laughs> just a sliver though, just a sliver. Um, but you can also get like fun with it. I mean, clearly I said, leave it. And then right over here, it says, no, I like to wash knives. <laughs> so, you know, it's that very easy, you know, get a little catchy and a, a lot of people engage with that. I'm going to confess. I have, I have had days where I just had, um, a sticky hand to top of my hand. Cause I didn't, cause I didn't just reach in and grab some, cause I didn't want to wash a knife, but I digress. Hey, well, I can't have king cake in the house. <laughs> same same um the second one right here is asking a question so one of the things that we found um that is really fun to do is you can do like a virtual q a um or you can just ask random questions if you're looking for information that maybe like those local people in your area really want to know or maybe the visitors to your area want to know ahead of time you can always pose these questions to your audience and just kind of see what comes back. Um, I got some very interesting responses to this. Do you want to know more about Mardi Gras traditions? Uh, question that I posed on our Instagram story yesterday. A lot of people were really just curious about why purple, green, and gold, um, which is interesting to note. And so I went back to make sure that in our, did you know about Mardi Gras story on our website had that explanation as to why purple, green, and gold. Um, and then I was able to respond to them with a link to that story so they could read about it themselves in depth. Um, so that works both ways, right? So you can use your website to answer those questions, or you can uh, you can crowdsource content that you might want to create for your website. You can throw these questions out there and um, take the responses and create stories about it. So you might want to, yeah, uh, that's, that's all. <laughs> Um, and then you could do a quiz. These are really fun. Um, only one of these is true. Mardi Gras celebrated three times a year. King cake is delicious. And there is only one Mardi Gras crew. Obviously, we all know the answer is B. King cake is delicious. Um, and then the last um, way to really engage with your followers that I wanted to really um, just drive home today was making sure all these fields within the crowd ref stories are filled out because it is that way for not only you to increase your um, Google authority and different things like that, but it's also a really good way and very free and easy way for you to support your partners. So that's all that I've got for you guys. Any questions? I know we kind of answered a few along the way, but feel free to ask more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and I know, Wanda and Marjorie, I know you knew about it, but um, just to reiterate for anybody watching later, um, the CrowdRef Stories Network that we talked a little bit about here and the, our ability to use those um, through our, our social media as well is an opportunity, to, again, that is totally free for all of our CVB and Tourist Commission partners. So if you haven't, um, if you're watching later and you haven't signed up, you haven't started working on this with us yet and you're interested and you want to get involved, you can reach out to myself or Teresa and let us know that we're super interested in, that you're super interested in joining us. We want as many of our partners sharing stories as possible because it does really create a lot of dynamic uh, content for, for social media and, it, and we're able to push out the stories that you wanna tell that are relevant to your location. Um, and it, it also helps leverage some of our other tools right now. So um, like, the, like they mentioned, we are working on getting a gallery up on our media landing page in addition to where we already have one on our actual louisianatravel.com site. Um, that's a great opportunity for partners if you're not using CrowdRef Stories yet to get some stories published and, and they'll be served up on this landing page where we're investing um, a lot of money <laughs> to drive yeah. uh, qualified travelers. So getting um, your story there, you're also getting your story in front of those people that we're paying to attract. So you get a little bit of a little bit of the boost from, from the money we're putting into that campaign. Um, similarly, um, Marjorie and Wanda, I think, no, we're working on um, redeveloping our fishing sites for, um, for, 
for that niche market. And one of the things we'd like to do is build up a gallery of stories about fishing so that we can have stories on our website on these, these major landing pages, the way we kind of already have our, our regular user generated content. So we'll be reaching out to partners that are within the Crowd Rift Story Network with some requests for things like that. Like we're looking for content, we're looking for road trips. Um, and by participating in this opportunity and creating those stories, you get that lift from when we push out that content as well. So if you're not involved, really, really encourage you to reach out and find out how, because it's totally, totally free and it's a great opportunity. Yeah, and the other thing about that is once, you, once you've created 10 stories, it, that unlocks the ability for you to create, for you to add CrowdRef story galleries to your website. So Wanda, have y'all made it to 10 yet? Have you, have you the, the magic 10? You're at five? Ah. Get out there and create five more and pop that baby on your, on your website. That's, and it's, so that's a great, it's another great opportunity through using this platform that you get an additional functionality for your website that just again for free. So um, for everybody that's not watching because <laughs> the video <laughs> bin's already doing it, make sure you uh, reach out to us and find out more about that if you're interested. Yes. And if we're, uh, if we're good, if we don't have any questions, we will uh, wrap up and let everybody kind of move on with their day. Thanks, y'all. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye, Wanda. <laughs>